Hello and welcome to another episode of Bare Bones Wargaming, a show with no bells, no whistles, no frills, just a man, a camera, and his game. This episode, doing another unboxing here. Um, I know I said I was going to think about doing a playthrough of Corsair Neater, but I decided not to because uh, I'm not a big fan of the dogfight rules, and I've been playing it with the simplified air combat rules from like Phantom Leader, Hornet Leader, uh, Israeli Air Force Leader. So since my goal is to give you guys a feel of how the game plays, I decided not to to do a playthrough of that. Now, if some folks want me to, even using the old method, if you will, uh, I'd be happy to do so. Just um, say so in the comments. But for this episode, this just showed up <laughs> by a rather circuitous route today. Uh, the latest release from Compass Games. Uh, the um, I was wondering where it was because folks were like, oh, I got it. And somebody said, I got it in Southern California. And I'm like, dude, Connecticut to Virginia. Connecticut to Virginia. So then I got a call from my neighbor who's like, hey, I got a box of yours on my doorstep. Turns out one of the numbers was wrong. Instead of a four, there was a three. And it was delivered to the wrong house. But it's here now. That's the important part. So we're going to be looking here at an unboxing coming to you live from table four in the man cave. I'm sure you probably noticed the background being different, white. Um, these are these big eight foot tables I bought at Walmart, uh, a couple of those. Uh, table number four. Number one is the one you usually see, the brown one. And then I've got three of these ranged around the man cave for different purposes. So we're going to be unboxing here. Europe and Torwall, Prelude to the Great War, designed by Chris Van Buren, and I hope I pronounced that right, done by Compass Games. So, like the cover, very cool, all the major leaders there. Here's the back. Um, very much, if you look at the map there, which we'll look at here in a minute, very Twilight struggle looking. And I haven't read the whole rulebook yet, I started to read it online, because it was posted online while I was waiting for this to show up. And I gotta say that my first reaction was, oh man, my wife loves Twilight Struggle, so she should be able to pick up this game, no sweat, because this game has very, very similar characteristics from what I've seen so far. So let's take a look inside the box. All right. Okay, so got some dice here, a couple six-sided dice and some uh, clear chips that you can use for um, some of the tables, as I saw in the rule book if you don't want to use the markers you can put the chip over top and still see uh, like for the game turn track and other things okay we've got several decks of cards here we've got a mobilization deck so let's take a look inside there as i open it i have to admit i've been looking forward to this game mainly because i'm not a big um i hesitate to use the word fan but i don't have a huge interest in world war one but what i do have an interest in is all the political maneuvering that went on between the end of the Franco-Prussian War, uh, actually even before that, kind of with the German unification, the Schleswig holstein uh, business in 1864, up until the eve of World War uh, One. So I've got like a bunch of books. I'm looking over here at my shelf. I've got um, Flintz's, I think I'm pronouncing his name right, three-volume, oh, you know, uh, ultimate work, so to speak, on Otto von Bismarck. And then I've got... Bismarck's Diplomacy at its, at its zenith, which I haven't read yet. Um, so that very much, all that interests me quite a bit uh, for that time period. So that's why I'm part of the reason I've been looking forward to this game so much. So this is the mobilization deck. And as you can see here, this is stability action, workers unite. All these different symbols mean different things. I was looking at them in the rule book. So nicely done. Nice pictures there. Uh, blockade. Stability action. Italian mobilization, okay, oh, political cartoons too, very cool, like that, Ottoman mobilization, British mobilization, jolly good, all right, German mobilization, which of course we <clears throat> know is, um, oh, that's interesting, France first, <laughs> I like that political cartoon from an objective standpoint, and what else do we got here, we've got Balkan mobilization, hmm, okay, interesting, We've got Russian mobilization. I was just telling my wife, <laughs> it's kind of funny, our, our two boys, uh, as you know from my other videos, our two boys are named after the last five czars of Russia, <laughs> Nicholas and Alexander. Never thought about it till just now. So, But anyway, being of Eastern European heritage myself, and they are, of course, now too, um, 
fits. And then the French. <laughs> so there we go. So there's the mobilization deck. Looking nice. And let's look at this little deck next. This is the stability deck. Alright. Oh no, strategy actually. Huh. It says on the back. I thought this was the stability one. Okay, so these this is Victorian era. You got the different time periods like Twilight Struggle, you have early war, mid war, late war. Okay, you got your ops numbers, the time period there's Queen Victoria. We are not amused. And then of course you've got your events. Very cool. And scoring cards. Russia scoring, Austria Hungary scoring, France scoring, Dreyfus Affair. Okay. Interesting. Emerald von Turpitz. Alright. One of my favorite political cartoons from this time period is the one that shows the Kaiser uh, kicking Bismarck out and about getting rid of the the who's going to steer the ship and all that kind of thing. Um, so. And as I understand from something I saw too, uh, this game begins, one player is the authoritarian player, the other one's the liberal player, and the authoritarian player actually begins with the uh, League of the Three Emperors, which was constructed by Bismarck to try and keep stability in Europe after his creation of the German Empire. So here's some more cards. We've got the Georgian era. So again, I like the illustrations. Okay, got colors, got some pictures. Yeah, that's an interesting one. The South Slavs, Yugoslavia, which is what this literally means. Um, Perfidus Italy. Huh. Uh, there's Mr. Taft and Teddy Roosevelt during the Georgian era. Interesting. See, but I like that kind of thing, though. I like all that kind of political things. Ah, how sass the rain. <laughs> okay, Jarez. I think I'm pronouncing that right. There's Franz Joseph, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. So, again, you know, very much, uh, very, uh, like, Twilight Struggle-ish looking cards here. There's the Germany scoring card. And same kind of thing, you can see presence, domination, control. Okay, and then battleground countries exist. All right, so very cool. All right, these look nice, but of course now we got to put them to the test. So hold on, they look good, but let's see. For me, always a good test of the quality of cards is how do they sound. Let's find out. It's not too bad. A little heavy, not as heavy as. Um, one of the most difficult decks to shuffle definitely has to be GMT's uh, 30 Years, 30 years War, um, Europe and Agony. That's, whew, those cards were, wow. Mm, 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 mm. That's pretty good. They seem to go together pretty well, pretty smooth, so I would give them a thumbs up. Okay. Now, let's take a look here. Next, we've got the rule book. So nice, full color, very cool. You got the spaces labeled. Again, the icons associated with economic icons. That's interesting. There's a list of, whoops, let's move this over here a little bit. There we go. There's a list of all of them there. Prelude to the Great War. All right, the naval arms race, which is basically like the space race in this game. Tension track, and of course, this game can also end with the unleashing of the Great War. Not too many rules either, if you notice. We're up to page 13, we're up to scoring cards, victory point track, and victory already. That's it. Page 14 starts the designer's notes. So this is very compact, but again, you know, if you play Twilight Struggle, the Twilight Struggle rulebook is very compact too. Okay, and then we got all the card notes. Very cool. Schlieffen. Alright, example of play. Okay, also always very cool. I always like that, especially for people who are new to systems. I think having an example of play is always good. And this is a nice lengthy one here, too, going through a couple of turns. And there's eight rounds, or I believe somewhere between seven, eight, nine, something like that. Again, like Twilight Struggle. It's pretty much functionally, um, systematic, syst systemically, bleh, it's like Twilight Struggle. Okay, and then we have a Great War. There too. And the marker legend on the back. Very cool. Alright, let's see what else is inside the box. Okay, we've got the 
Naval Arms Race card. You can move up through there. We'll find out how to do that. Gives a lot of victory points, I see. Interesting. Okay. Now, are we rolling a die if you get to the first one to get to that box? Interesting. Okay. And last but not least. Oh, actually not last but not least, but let's see here now. Let's take a look at the counters. Well, the counters are very simple. Not that anybody would be surprised by that. Because, of course, you know, it is, again, like Twilight Struggle, you just have the markers for each side. The authoritarians on the left there with the crown and the liberal on the right with the blue, which is actually the inverse of all that. But, you know. And then we got the different game markers, and that's about it for that. Um, so, very simple, very basic. Um, you know, but then again, I'm not sure exactly how complicated one would expect it to get. Uh, you know. Map is a map sheet. It is not mounted for you mounted map board fans. Please note. Let's take a look here and see what we got. Okay. Let's take a look here. So again, let's let's just zoom in here on Austria Hungary and the Balkans. Again, very much if you're familiar with Twilight Struggle, you're going to recognize all this with the boxes, one on each side. Now, the socioeconomic ones will be interesting to see how they fit into the game. Uh, let's see, you've got your round track, you've got your turn track, Victorian, Edwardian, and Georgian era up there at the top. Go ahead and show you that. Right there. And down here you've got your uh, icons, socioeconomic icons. Some boxes here. Interesting to me that Great Britain is only one box up here at the top. But then again, I mean, given the power politics of the time period, it does make sense. Okay, and the Balkans has their own area here in terms of scoring and everything else. So you can see if in your games it will be just like Bismarck predicted, the next war will be triggered by some damn fool thing in the Balkans. So I'm pretty sure Bismarck said that. I know he said it wasn't worth the bones of one Pomeranian Grenadier. That I'm sure of. But I'm pretty sure he's the one that also said that. Too. And then over here we've got our victory point track. We've got places to put our cards. And then we've also got Great War participants as well. Um, Great War status track. The tension track. So, okay. Interesting. So you can end up ending this thing by initiating the Great War as well so maps i mean you know it's a map it feels a little heavier it's not a cardstock map it is a paper map but it does feel a little heavier than um you know some other paper maps i own i will say that so so there you have it there is europe in turmoil unboxing from compass games uh, i do look forward to trying this i'm going to try it a couple of different ways with solo methods, one of them being um, uh, Stuka Joe's CDG solo method, which I have not tried with a common deck yet. I have tried it with games like 30 Years War that have each player has his own deck and it works terrific with that, but I have yet to test it with a common deck. So I, I will mess with that and I also have some of my own solo methods I've um, either picked up or devised myself over the years to, to play some games. Um, so, I will be coming back to you eventually with this, uh, a solo play through of this to show you. And again, for those of you solo gamers, to see if you think it's worthwhile picking up from a solo perspective, if you'll have fun with it or not. But first, I've got to finish on the other table, the main event table, which is why I'm filming on this table. Uh, the main event is still the I'm Flying the Unfriendly Skies, playing a wing and a prayer again. Uh, I'm doing much better this time around, I might add, but. Whew, been taking a beating lately. Um, <laughs> one of my missions that I just came back from uh, blasting Kiel, we actually got my B-17 group got jumped by ME-262 fighters, not once, but twice. That is crazy. So, so there you have it. Unboxing of Europe and Tormo, which just came hot off the press. It was released on Friday by Compass Games. So, I will see you next time. I'm not sure when with a solo playthrough of this game. So until then, this has been Tim Korchnoy with Bare Bones Wargaming saying thanks for watching 
and we will see you next time from all the political machinations that emanate prior to the First World War. See you then.